Hello everyone and welcome to another game we're gonna cover from the Nor Altibox Norway Championship. Uh, it's a classical game from round 4, Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Coruana. And uh, they already played their second classical game and uh, I don't know if you know uh, what happened in there, but we're gonna talk about it after the game. So here Magnus has the white pieces, Fabi has black, uh, number 1 and, two, uh, and number 2 player in the world in classical chess, uh, playing uh, one of the, uh, the oldest, most traditional lines in chess, so hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, so and uh, thank you all for the welcoming messages uh, there are like 2500 of them uh, uh, like uh, so many of them I I've tried to read them all and thank you so much for that uh, I didn't see you suggest all that many games but uh, you know thank you for all, all the all the best wishes now getting back to the game uh, Magnus with the white pieces opens with d4 and we're gonna have a very very nice line of the Nimzo Indian defense knight of six with c4 e6 uh, and knight to c3 Magnus invites Fabi to go for the Nimzo Indian which he does bishop to b4 uh, and the queen to c2 these are the two most popular options for uh, for white here uh, white goes queen to c2 and Fabi castles uh, with a3 challenging the bishop and the bishop captures on c3 uh, although it seems like a good idea to go back with the bishop why would you give your bishop for a knight uh, black almost exclusively plays this here this has been played in a, in a uh, well in a few games but uh, basically uh, sorry this has been played in a few games but basically you capture on c3 uh, we have queen captures and now b6 being the main line here uh, we have d5 uh, by fabi uh, we have bishop to g5, now putting pressure on the knight, uh, also putting pressure on the center. So d captures on c5 and the queen captures on c5. Now grabbing that pawn and b6. That's not a b6. Uh, b6 preparing to develop the light square bishop as you usually do in an So You want to uh, get 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 this set up optimally, let's say knight d7, develop the bishop hopefully to b7. Uh, play c5 get the rook into the game uh, and so on so here rook to d1 by magnus and now comes bishop to a6 uh, bishop to b7 has been played in one game it was actually played this year in croatian championship uh, between jovanic and zelcic uh, where uh, jovanic won that game uh, but other than that game uh, bishop to a6 is played exclusively here uh, attacking the queen and now uh, you don't want to give uh, black free development that that'd be silly of course you uh, you do have the white pieces and uh, you want to keep an eye on the bishop you don't want to allow black to freely play knight d7 rook c8 c5 and so on so here queen to a4 still putting pressure on the bishop not allowing uh fabi to develop this knight uh we have h6 challenging the bishop bishop to h4 and now queen to d7 fabi offers a queen trade uh, and magnus declines with queen to c2 uh we have queen to c6 now offering the queen trade a second time and if you decline here then you give white uh, a beautiful uh, square for the queen like if you go back then the queen gets uh uh well, i mean stays here the bishop is on an excellent diagonal the knight can jump into e4 uh it's going to be an excellent position for uh for black so instead queen captures on c6 here magnus trades knight captures on c6 and now bishop captures on f6 uh, magnus decides to uh, give up the bishop pair in order to mess up fabi's pawn structure we have g captures on f6 and now knight f3 is a known move here but here we have e3 by magnus and it is as of move 15 that we have a completely new game and this theoretical struggle uh, in the nimzo indian uh, so fabi captures the bishop of course we have bishop captures on f1 king captures and now knight to a5 you you want to get the rook into the game push c5 and uh, you want to fully develop everything so knight to f3 by magnus and now knight to c4 putting pressure on the pawn here and while you could defend this pawn uh, in a uh, well in a lot of ways you could actually defend it but you could also play rook to c1 attack the knight and if the knight captures you can capture on c7 uh, but Magnus uh, probably, of course, had this all analyzed at home and uh, thought that rook to b1 poses most problems for black. So rook to b1, uh, and now finally c5. This is uh, uh, always a question whether you first play rook fc8, whether you play rook a to c8, whether you push c5 right away. So these are all uh, great questions, you know, uh, for, for someone to answer, but, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we, we, of course, cannot say as uh, you have to, like, truly truly analyze this with with the deep uh, engine analysis and then uh, decide what's best here and i have no idea what kind of equipment these guys have so here uh first c5 by fabi immediately uh taking advantage of this center and king e2 magnus brings the king into the game 
we have rook f to c8, now getting the rook into the game, and Magnus goes rook h to c1. He brings his rook into the game as well. Now putting pressure on the knight, knight to d6, and only now captures on c5. We have captures, captures, and now rook to c2. Keeping an eye on the b2 pawn while preparing rook b to c1 to put pressure on the c5 pawn. Uh, king to f8, Fabi starts bringing his king into the game as well, and now knight to d2. Uh, the knight is now coming uh, deeper into the game. We have c4 by uh, Fabi, uh, now the knight is sufficiently defended, uh, and Magnus goes rook b to c1, saying, okay, now the pawn is attacked three times, there is not much for you to do, and now rook a to b8. Fabi says, okay, you can capture this, but after all is said and done, I'm going to capture uh, on b2. And uh, while this is possible, this will come with check, and Magnus doesn't like that. So first, Magnus plays king to f3, and now we have a very interesting uh, move here by Fabi. Here, Fabi played c3, and he gave up a pawn. But to understand Fabi c3, we, we first have to ask ourselves, uh, what happens if you just don't give up a pawn? Uh, well, let's say you try playing something else. Uh, let's say you play king e7. You, you improve the position of the king. Uh, white just goes uh, and trades everything. Knight captures on c4. Knight captures. We have rook captures, rook captures, rook captures. And after rook captures this pawn, you have rook to c7 check, picking up the a7 pawn as well. White has a passed a pawn. The king protects the f2 pawn. And white has uh, amazing winning chances. So this is what happens here. On the other hand, if you try something like a5 to keep the pawn protected uh, from such attacks, it doesn't really keep the pawn protected because after, again, all is uh, said and done here, after a capture fest occurs on c4, captures, 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 rook captures on b2, we get rook c5, you still lose the pawn and you will still enjoy the exact same endgame. So this is what would happen. So here, after this king to f3 move, uh, Fabi decided that he doesn't like this endgame and he decided to play this endgame uh, instead. So c3, uh, he's now down a pawn, but at least Magnus will not have a passed pawn. Uh, and now Magnus captures, we have b uh, captures on c3, and now rook to c5. Uh, we have c4 by Magnus, the pawn is now defended three times here, so it's very safe. Uh, and f5 by Fabi. We have king to e2 and king to e7 now. We have king to d3 and now king to d7. Uh, we have rook to c3, adding more protection here, uh, and rook to c6. Uh, we have c5 now, Magnus continues advancing with his passed c pawn, uh, and now comes knight to e8. Now you can shift the knight around, maybe to f6, maybe to d5. Uh, we have knight to f3, now threatening knight to e5 check to pick up material here, and of course rook to a6, uh, getting the rook out of harm's way. Uh, knight to e, sorry, knight to e5 uh, with check, uh, uh, for forcing black to move back or forth. Uh, king to e7, and now comes king to e2. Magnus still wants to keep his king very safe before he he starts uh, doing anything rash. Uh, we have knight to f6, preparing to again shift the knight over to d5 or e4 uh, if needed, and now rook 1 to c2, not allowing any rook to be check ideas in, in the future. So knight to d5, shifting the knight, and now rook to d3. So keeping the, the rook defended, we have rook back to c8, and now rook to b3. So uh, the pawn is the, the defended, uh, and uh, now Magnus also might be having access to, this, to the b7 square. So rook to c7, Fabio of course prevents that, and now rook to c4. Just grabbing more space, making a nice rook lift, and asking Fabi, what will you play? Uh, Fabi plays rook to a5, puts more pressure on the c5 pawn, and now just knight back to d3, Magnus defends. And here uh, you could uh, try a lot of different uh, approaches. You could try h5. Uh, you could maybe try rook to a6, bring the rook over to c6 to put uh, more pressure on the c5 pawn. Uh, but Fabi decides to go for a different plan. He pushes e5. And now he says, okay, you either give up the c5 pawn for the e5 pawn, uh, or uh, I'm just going to push this pawn all the way to e4, and then I'm really going to have a, a massive position. Uh, so here Magnus, of course, goes for the capture. Knight captures on e5. Uh, we have rook a captures on c5, captures on c5, captures, and rook to b7 check. Uh, now the thing is, yes, you do get king to e6 in, attacking the knight, so you don't have time to capture the a7 pawn, uh, but you do have time to capture the f7 pawn with the knight, which is exactly what Magnus does. So knight captures on f7, and now you're already up two pawns. And here, rook to a5. This was Fabi's plan. Give up the h6 pawn as well, and then grab the a3 pawn. At least you get to start pushing your 
uh, pushing your a7 pawn. However, Magnus decides uh, it's not, uh, maybe not uh, ideal to give black this opportunity. Even though knight captures on h6 is the strongest move recommended by the engine, uh, Magnus decides to go for the most more human approach, knight to d8 with check, king to d6, and now rook to b3. He says, okay, these pawns are weak, I'm just gonna defend my a3 pawn and not give you any counterplay whatsoever. So rook to a6, uh, and now comes knight back to f7 with check. The rook will now defend the h6 pawn, so the king can freely move. King c5, and now knight to e5. Uh, we have h5 by Fabi, and now king to d2. Uh, we have h4, and now knight to d3 with check. King to c4. Uh, the king is very safe there, uh, so you don't have to worry about getting checkmated as uh, the knight is nicely covering all of the squares. So king to c2 and now rook to d6 uh, by Fabi. Rook to d6 uh, is one option, uh, for example, if you try something like knight to b6, uh, it still won't help you because you get rook to b4 check and, uh, well, there's the problem of this pawn, so king d5. Uh, for example, king d5, you're going to get rook to d4 check, king to e6, and now you might even lose the rook, for example, here, uh, knight to c5 check, uh, or even if you go here, knight to b4 check, again, uh, wins, the, wins the rook, and you're still, still going to win this h5 pawn. So instead, Fabi tries to go with a different plan uh, of defense, rook to d6, uh, and now comes uh, a move, uh, knight to f4. Uh, and after this knight to f4 move, uh, it was on move 51 that Fabiano Corwana resigned the game. And Magnus wins a classical game with black in the Nimzo Indian defense in the classical variation. So very, very exciting stuff. And here you, res you resign because you're simply down too much material and you don't have any good moves. Uh, like if you if you trade the captures, captures, uh, white will not capture... <coughs> Uh, sorry about that. White will not recapture with the pawn, uh, but rather rook before check. And after the king moves, you're just going to capture with the rook. You're still up so much material. Uh, black was uh, unsuccessful in messing up any of your uh, pawn structure. Uh, and if you instead don't go for the knight trade, if you try and keep the knight, let's say you try something else. Uh, instead of capturing, let's say you bring the knight over to f6, uh, you're still going to get a uh, rook before check, king to c5, and now even knight to d3 check, uh, the h pawn falls, and uh, you're simply going to be down too much material. So even though it's a classical game, Fabio resigns, and uh, an excellent victory for Magnus in, in round 4 of the Altibox Norway Championship, as this is, uh, this is a classical game. And as you know, two of them played... Uh, two of them have played... Uh, uh, 12 games of classical chess in the World Chess Championship match and uh, all of them have ended in a draw, which is which is pretty crazy. So yeah, uh, great, uh, great game by Magnus. And just so I don't forget, uh, and also there is a question uh, for the end of this game, uh, where did Fabi go wrong? Because, you know, they teach us in chess, uh, you can't just win a game if none of the players have gone wrong. So where did Fabi go wrong this game? That is a question for you. Uh, and also, uh, let's not forget the standings uh, after all the rounds of this tournament have been played. I'm going to keep it updated, but uh, the, these, are, the, these are not the standings after this round. These are the standings after all of the rounds so far have been played. So, uh, sorry about that. Uh, so, there we have it. Magnus is leading the tournament with 16.5 out of 25, followed by Alireza Firuja with 15.5 out of 26, then Levon Aronian. Uh, with 13 out of 26, Fabiana Corwana with 12 and a half, Young Shishtov Duda with 8 and a half, and Ariantari not having uh, uh, a lot of luck so far with 1 and a half out of 24. Uh, I tried following some of the games uh, during my stay in the hospital, but I was like, uh, like I, I, I checked some of the games, but I was too, uh, you know, too, too, too high up on, on the good stuff to make sense of anything, so I didn't even bother. Uh, so all, all the games are new to me. I'm really just experiencing it all, all from the start, and it uh, seems to be seems to be like a very exciting event. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Thomas Arnold, uh, Patrick Colin Walsh, Nina Webb, uh, Kyle Weatherly, and Tim Burdick for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage uh, of this event, uh, you know, as much as I can, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day, and don't forget, if I said anything weird, uh, we're gonna blame it on the anesthesia. See you soon.